Hey folks, what's up? It's Mike. If you are hearing or watching this from April 8th to April 22nd, you need to head over to sunsetlakecbd.com and take advantage of their big 420 sale. If you use coupon code 420, you will receive 30% off everything site-wide. Orders over $100 will get a free 20-count jar of Vibe Gummies and 4.20% of proceeds will be donated to the Great Last Prisoner Project. This sale goes till April 22nd, and if you've been on the fence about CBD, now's a great time to try it. Plus, you'll be raising money for a great cause. So head on over to sunsetlakecbd.com to save 30% from April 8th to April 22nd. See their site for additional terms and conditions. What do we do? Yeah. It's getting old. How many um, doctors do you see? How many, how many uh, recommendations or... Mikey, can I have another water? As an old man, I'm getting dry in yeah. the... Uh, how many... Um, like before you make like any type of decision where you're just like, okay. <laughs> well, I'll this tell doctor you, said don't, no surgery. This doctor said surgery. I'll tell you what I did. I went to... I put it off as long as humanly possible to the point that... Thank you. I... Um, had to get a cane to get out of the car. Mm. Getting out of the car was the worst pain. Like I literally had to hold on to the door jam and like it's this leg, it's my it's my pedal leg. So I would get out of the car and have to kind of take a deep breath and then I had like a little pop out cane that I'd get out of the car with. Oh, Dude. Jeez. Yeah. And I'm going, son of a bitch, motherfucker. And I'd stand up, and then it would, like, I'd have to, like, let the paint. It, it was, like, opening a valve of pain. Yeah. And then the valve would, like, run its course, and then the pain would go away. And then I'd put the cane back in the car, shut the door, limp a couple times by, like, my fifth or sixth step. I'm okay. This is how it starts. Wow. So then I go to a doctor. <clears throat> this guy could have been Abraham Lincoln. Oldest person alive. He's, he flies down. He's got his whole finger in his mouth, like pulling peanut butter off his. Just a gross dude. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, lay, "Lay down on the table." I'm like, "I can't get up on that table." Yeah. He's like, "Let me help you up, whatever." So there was like a stool. I got up. He grabs my heel and tried to lift my foot towards my face, and I almost hit the ceiling. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. Oh my god. And he goes, "Like, all right, all right." He goes, so "Let's do a, a five day steroid pack." So this steroid is supposed to like help with the inflammation and whatever. Didn't do a thing. So he goes, you earned yourself an MRI. So I do an MRI. Have you ever had an MRI? No. Dude, it's terrifying. You see. You're in a donut where yeah, you yeah. can't move your arms and you're just laying there and they're like, you hear the machine and it's just magnets. Mike, have you done an MRI? I've done lots of MRIs. They go like this when you get an MRI. They go, have you ever had shards of metal in your eyes and i go why and they go because it's magnets and it'll rip through oh and i'm like i've blackout drank for like a good portion of my 20s like i could have fought a fence at some yeah, point yeah, yeah, i don't yeah. know yeah i don't know and they're like well if you knew if you did you'd know and i'm like so and now if you don't know you'll find out if, if you don't know you'll find out and then i heard a story from my buddy that he heard a story about a turkey hunter this is another thing about getting old I heard a story about a guy from a guy who heard a story. <laughs> yeah, right. A turkey hunter who shot a, a turkey and part of the pellet, metal pellet, yeah. lead pellet, whatever, was in the, the breast of the turkey that he ate and the pellet was still in his stomach and he went for an MRI and it ripped right through his intestine. Oh, Talk about karma. That's like, right. a, that's like that a Elmer Fudd Tales from the Crypt right. shit right there. Right? So that's that turkey got him. And yeah. that turkey was laughing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm laying there like this. Like, when was the last time around. I had turkey? When's the last time I, yeah, yeah, thank God I never killed Nate. I'm like, did I ever, like, pass out and try to, like, like you know, have sex with a metal fence? Like, yeah. I don't know what. Do I have metal in my eyes? Luckily, I didn't. The guy calls me. It was 730 in the morning. I go get this MRI. He calls me. He goes, congratulations. You have a severely herniated disc. You need surgery immediately. He goes, it's not going to help. No no, epidural or physical therapy is going to help. And then I went for a second opinion. Lean, sleeve tattoo, spine surgeon that was like a South American professional soccer player. Yeah. Like, I like this dude. I, he, could get, he could help 
like me like he could help like break someone out of like a fire or like, yeah, a yeah, yeah, like yeah. He, he this guy could probably still do a like a half marathon like if they called it like right now go yeah he's running it without breaking a sweat this is the guy i want doing my surgery not fucking old man river picking picking fucking shit out of his teeth he can't just flies down for yeah. christ's sake <laughs> he was burping through words he'd go what does it hurt when you <sighs> oh and i'm like oh you're my you're not going anywhere near my back oh so um that second guy goes you, you don't need surgery yet and i like that a surgeon told me i didn't need surgery yet. yeah that's his business. That's yeah. where he get makes his money. Apparently, most accidents in the MRI because of the magnets is because somebody left a piece of equipment in the room that is metal, and then it comes flying into the machine. What the fuck? Yeah. It's so not like, magnets on people. It's like a chair goes flying at it because like a nurse left, uh, left a left a, a, a pen in the room or something. And it's it like went Final nuts. Destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's tough. <laughs> oh Can you my imagine God. that? And they make you sign tons of shit. That's like. You know, if a if an old like you know BB that you swallowed when you were nine like comes ripping through, like we're not, we're not responsible. responsible. So if a if a pen if a rogue pen comes flying and hits you in the head, oh, well, it's not our fault. Ugh. So this is my second. I, I I the first guy said surgery, second guy said no surgery. I'm going back to see the second guy on Friday. Yeah, because I'm nothing's working right now. And I'm kind of like gonna be like, what's the deal, man? Yeah. Like, because at some at, at a certain point, you just kind of go, you have to go, you know, give it to me straight, doc. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Yeah. Now, because it's expensive. Yeah. I'm 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 spending so much money on physical therapy that I don't think is working. I have a collection of prescriptions I'm not taking, and none of this is free. Right. So it's like if I go get surgery. And another thing I heard, and this is something that, like, I'm afraid to Google, but Mike, if you want to, the percentage of people who get one back surgery, like, probably are going to get two or three or four or five back surgeries. Mm. There's something that, like, once you pop, you it's can't like a, stop. It's like a tattoo? <clears throat> Pretty much you become addicted to back <laughs> surgeries. Your whole life you've been trying to avoid being addicted to painkillers, <laughs> and now you're just addicted to back <laughs> surgeries. <laughs> Imagine if I just have like a J Lo butt on my back. Like now all of a sudden I'm getting like lips on my back. It's just like Mike, uh, can we talk? Hey I buddy, how you? What's going on, man? I googled it and I'm not gonna tell you. Is it horrible? It ain't great. Let me hear it. Up to forty percent of back surgeries are not successful. It's so common, in fact, there's a term for it called failed back surgery syndrome. FBSS. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, see yeah but i can't sh i have to shit like tony pena right now I, like do you know that's an old guy co reference it's that he's a catcher who used to have to kick his leg out like he would catch with one leg normal and one leg out yeah so he could like get up and throw i i literally have to like I, i'm i'm in so much agony in dumb circumstances it's one of those things where you you just make the choice of like do i ride this out for the rest of my life and just be you know just this just be a part of my new existence or do i take the you know chance the with the yeah with the surgery it's one of those things where you just like talk it over with the wife and what does your wife say well she um she's i'm, I'm just basically like hoping that she doesn't go like I don't want to be with this old broken can no. anymore. Well, that's the, but I mean, in my head, I'm kind of like, fuck. That's uh, because if, if she had that, you wouldn't want to be with her. So oh. you assume, <laughs> you assume it must be true for it you too. It must be the reverse. You piece of work. You son of a bitch. Unconditional love <laughs> is Vows definitely. my eye. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, that's a, that's a thing. I mean. Yeah, I don't. Obviously, I would be with her. I would. I would keep. I would stick with her through thick and thin. But it's like, I get to a point where it's like, I'm the boy who cried wolf so bad, because I'm a chicken. I'm a hypochondriac. I die of ten things a day. Yeah, yeah. She's a freaking nurse practitioner, so she's my web MD. Yeah. I ask her so many dumb things that I don't know if she realizes how much this actually hurts right now. Mmm. Because I'm like. I uh, during COVID, I had COVID every day. I had variants. People didn't even. Yeah, they were like, "We haven't even discovered this. Isn't even a thing yet." Right. 
I'm like, when I blink, it hurts a little. And she's like, shut the fuck. That's yeah. not even a thing. Yeah. I would, I make stuff up that I have. No, I don't, I don't lie. I just, I'm saying like, I'm, if, if I have a, like a, you know, a hangnail, I'm like, oh no, it's cause like my, my skin cells are dying. Like I'm, I'm yeah. depleted in something. So I don't know. I, I got to keep some mystique in this relationship. <laughs> you know, she sees me dragging in books to poop with, to stand on, yeah. to She's gargoyle. Like, now I'm like, my lower back is in. She's like, oh, is it? All right. I think I cried, the boy who cried back pain. Yeah. Now I'm an old man with it. And no, no, she, but she's basically like, be, be conservative when it comes to surgery. You get one back. Yeah. And this doctor said, I don't want to put anybody under anesthesia that I don't have to. Yeah. And it may heal on its own. So let's give it two or three months to heal. And if it doesn't, the worst case scenario is we do the surgery and you had two or three months of pain. So I'm about two months into that two months of three months of pain. Uh -huh. And it's annoying as balls, man. Like, and, I, and I'm kind of like going to have a chat with them about. That's the other thing. Sometimes you just get to a point where you're like, you know what? The pain makes the decision for you where you're just like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. You quality know, of life quality of life like yeah but what if it gets worse after this surgery then there's that whole thing i mean that's always the i mean we if we lived on what ifs we'd be <laughs> i feel like your life might be a what if driven life and that's not a i don't think that's a fun space to be in on a constant day no because there's always a what if there's always a what there's if. always a what if I know, but back surgery is a big no, what is. if, dude. It, it, it is. It's not like what if I poop on this LaGuardia toilet. <laughs> that's a that's a that um, yeah, we we all suffer from. But yeah. like, really, Mike, you've always tried to not be me. No, just in that in that phrase in the germophobia. I, I don't want to become such a germophobe. Like if I continued to allow this behavior, I will. It's just going to be worse and worse, and then I won't be able to go anywhere, touch anything, and I was just like. I don't want to be this yeah. crazy about it. Yeah. I'm still a little bit, you know, I still get, I still have my own little quirks, but like I'm in too many hotel rooms to be like, oh, I, I don't have Lysol wipes. Now I can't go in. Like I just can't, can't live like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped checking yeah. sheets if it, in like a nicer hotel, like a, in a shit hotel, I'll like look at every, make sure not, you know, whatever. But now There's I'm not just like, like I'm a just, bunch of like rogue hairs and something. Shit. Yeah. But now I just, I slide in and that's that. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty, I have to. I'm not as uh yeah, I'm pretty much like that. I'm not, I'm not that crazy when it comes to every little detail i'm i'm more old school in the sense of just like go out play in dirt get some germs like figure yes, it out you'll yes. be fine your body you know it, it's not going to kill you is it this i mean there's certain things like like going back to the like public restaurant certain things where i'm just like hell no that are my i feel like are my no fly zones but all in all yeah go go play in some dirt you'll be fine I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel like, like when you're on a plane and someone's coughing, does it bother you? It's it's not ideal, but I don't feel like I'm going to die. Like it's not something that's pleasant to my senses, but I'm just like whatever. I'm what? I'm just I'm just that guy. I'm just whatever. Oh, I'm so jealous. How did you get there? I've always. Did I you ever not have like whatever? You know, no, like, I think I've always been a, like, just what I've just always been a, you're going to live forever, dude. I don't know. I don't know. I've just always been that. Like there's certain things that definitely like disgust me where I'm just like gross. Yeah. But, uh, as far as me being afraid that it's going to like affect my health or affect something, if, if I can't avoid, if it's something I can't avoid, I'm just like, F it. You F know it. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm on a plane. Do you think this you could teach me? Is, do you think you could teach me how to do that? I could try. Let's go through a situation right now. All right. We're on the plane. Yeah. You and I are traveling together. Mike is some disgusting fucking stranger. Yeah. Right? Just <laughs> gross. So I, don't Mike, like, I don't like no. where this is headed. <laughs> <laughs> he is sitting next to us or in between us or I don't know, whatever, near us. That that Enough that he can like yeah. fuck up our time. Yeah. And he's coughing not covering his mouth right yeah he's sneezing he's loud he's just like in our world just imposing on our comfort yeah i'm starting to get like you could tell as my friend 
I'm starting to fidget and get like anxious and stuff like that, right? Yeah. How do you talk me off the ledge? Well, see, and that's I want to like throw a hot coffee in his face and film him and scream right. and go vi- I want to care in his ass. Right. I think in that case though, he's he would be close enough that a minor confrontation could ensue. So it it'd be less about me feeling like oh god, I'm going to die here and more about me turning and te- and saying, "Hey bro, you know, cover your mouth and like we're in a we're sharing a space here." Like Okay. You know what I mean? It's more in that situation it would be something like that. But if so but if he was sitting two rows behind me and I just had to live with the fact that somebody two rows behind me is hacking and I'm just like what what am I Yeah. It, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, See, I can't even out. if I let myself go there. Yeah. I'm I'm never getting on a plane yeah. or a car or a ever again. But if he's sitting n- n- near us, oh yeah, that's different. I have like, to hey, kind of go like, dude. Well, yeah, you know, what are we doing? I but I have a thing where like I kind of I'm vigilant, and I kind of sometimes will police a situation. Yeah, and then the moment I do it, I r- regret. I have like a post game show where it's like, who the fuck do you think you are? If it's a, it, there's certain scenarios where it's actually affecting you in certain scenarios where it's just affecting your sensibilities it's annoying if it's if annoying yeah. if it's something that's annoying and it's just, then it's kind of like who the fuck do you think you're? But if something that's actually affecting you somebody's hawking a loogie in, th- in in midair on a in a concealed tube flying in the air like that's a, you're affecting everybody you're a hero in that point you're an unsung <laughs> hero if you confront that person because it's literally affecting your health and people around you but like yeah somebody who's just being annoying and then it's just kind of like uh, what, what can oh you do? my god michael how about you do you get like are you gonna say something or do you just eat it and go people suck and move on it depends on the scenario yeah i'm a I, I do it in the bathroom here all the time, just in general. People suck. They put notes up. They're like, can somebody, can you just make sure you just look? I've put notes on the walls like, just look behind you before yeah. you leave. Yeah. Because it's, you go in there and the toilets are filled. Yeah. And this oh, is an yeah. adult, this is like a working adult space. So, like, mm. in those scenarios, I'm like, I'll go, I'll just, I'll be in the bathroom and just watch it happen. I'm like, and I'll say something. I'm like, this is disgusting. Yeah. This is gross. Like, oh, you're just going to walk out? Like I don't care. Yeah. I don't care anymore. Yeah, because yeah. it's like that affects me. If yeah. it affects me, then I'm I'm I'm. I like to be vocal if I can. Sometimes I'm also a little pussy about it, but <laughs> yeah. But it helps that you're a big guy. So even if you are, a pussy I am about aware it. of the privilege I carry yeah. in, in this in the in this with this pant this thirty eight thirty four pant <laughs> in this thirty eight thirty four pant. That's hilarious. I sometimes feel like I almost enjoy being disappointed because it like releases some like like dopamine thing yeah. where it's like. I knew I shouldn't trust people. Uh, Is that twisted as fuck? Where it's like, I'm like, oh, that person's not going to flush or whatever. Or that person's going to be gross. And then they sit down and they are. And I go, see, I knew it. Like, everyone's horrible. Yeah. And it's almost like a, like there's like a there's like a pleasure to being disappointed. Hmm. Is that crazy? I don't know if it's crazy, but is it a... It's not healthy. No, and it reminds me of, um, because are you a confrontational person? No. Exactly. That's the sign of someone who isn't a confrontational person. So you, when the thing happens where you go, I knew, see, I knew, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of like your way of going, well, I'm not going to confront them about it because I knew this is just people are just suck yeah as opposed to confronting them or confronting the situation and cor- you know correcting the wrong you just go ah, i know people suck can i can i take a step back i yeah. think i might kind of be a confrontational person. oh yeah okay i don't know i don't know in, in certain circumstances okay my wife and i kind of like realized i have a character in me that comes out sometimes that's called the low risk vigilante yeah where it's like Look, I'll I'll step in and if someone's like harassing, yeah, yeah. I saw a guy once kick a dog and I oh, like God. grabbed him by the throat and whatever. Like that shit, I can't talk. Yeah. I w- I don't know if that's confrontational. Well, yeah, yeah. But if I'm in a situation, um, 
where someone is impact. I think I'm confrontational. Holy shit. I think I'm a confrontational person. Yeah. I think I'm realizing it now that like, yeah. I, I don't. Well, all the wiping and the scared and the nervousness is just you pushing down the confrontation that you naturally have in you. Yes. But it's a thing where it's, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be confrontational. I'm not going to instigate. Right. I'm more reactively confrontational in the sense of like, one time I was pumping gas and I saw a guy in a, like a white BMW, like some flashy jerk off corporate yeah. business guy parked across three handicap spots. Okay. Across them. Yeah. And I couldn't help it. And I go, dude, do the right thing here. And like, he looked at me like, who the fuck? Like, who's that? Right. Yeah. And he didn't do anything, but my wife got out of the car and like, looked at me and she's like, what are you doing? Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I just, it bothers me that that guy is such a jackass, is such a self involved yeah. idiot that like he's taking up three handicapped spots to make his life a little bit more convenient. And I spout out some shit at him. Yeah. That's confrontational. I, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but it's yeah, also yeah. like I kind of feel like I'm sticking up for the non-existent handicapped people in that parking that, lot. That parking spot's going to be me if I don't get this back <laughs> surgery. <laughs> you better move that in seven to ten years. But is that confrontational? Absolutely. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that a dick thing? Is confrontational no, always a, bad? Because you're confrontational for a for a greater cause. Yeah, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's. I don't think that it mean, confrontational means bad. I th think it means that you react when you feel either you or behalf of somebody else has been besmirched or yes. somewhere, something that's like you're going to react instead of just being passive and let it kind of slide by. But I feel like sometimes when people already expect, um, like I did, like I used to date this girl who was just always every time it would be like at work or wherever it's just like and then they did this and then they did this and blah blah blah, blah and so and so did this and I'm like well and the next time I see this blah, blah, it's like okay and she but she never would do anything about it uh -huh. it was always you're complaining you hate this you people suck blah 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 it's like well you can do something you can say something you can sit but would never do that so it's just like sometimes it's just easier to just go people suck as opposed to going no i'm gonna say something in this yeah. situation because this isn't this isn't right usually yeah. that's even easier because no one's expecting it yeah you know and then you call them out they're like what like huh? they, they don't even know what to do i had a situation there was a guy nice fancy car cut off made a turn too fast and there was this little Hispanic guy, tiny little man, clearly coming off of like his fifth shift of the day. You could just tell he was like worn out. And then he starts, the guy gets jumps out of the car and starts screaming at him like, yeah, I'm like, and I was standing right there and I gave my, my girlfriend my backpack. I just hold this for a second. I just went up and I was like, okay, now it's on us. Now yeah. I'm with him. So you're going to do that to me too? Mm. And I just basically shoved him back in his car and yeah, and started yelling at him. Wow. Like, like, you're not going to do, you do something to him, do something to me. Yeah. And then, but that's again, my size so gave yeah, me that ability and then i saw, yeah. 38. I saw yeah. his wife in the car and i was just like is this the guy and I, then i started then i started losing yeah, my yeah, mind yeah, i'm yeah, like yeah, is yeah, the guy yeah. you chose to be with guy that wants to pick on a little guy because he because your husband can't drive right i was like go ahead yeah do something wow. about it that yeah. was, it was really fun yeah. but also like that's something that, like but you're same vigilant. type of vigilante but it's not like i'm not gonna yell at somebody because they threw out a piece of paper like i'm like whatever but something like that, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Some of this, you need to be, it's people that, need to be, call, you people aren't called out enough on right, their bullshit, yeah. you know? See, that's, so I think there's a continuum, there's a spectrum of confrontation, right? Yeah. There's cuck way at the end where you're just going to be like walked all over and you're a peon and, and then there's the, you're just a straight up prick. Yeah, yeah. Right? And there's got to be a place in the middle where maybe sometimes you lean more towards yeah 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 cucked them where you're just kind of like all right i'm on a plane and these people are you know sneezing and whatever there's nothing i can do about it and then there's a guy kicking a dog yeah or mike's like circumstance or whatever where you kind of have to like step in for humanity's yeah, sake yeah yeah and go like all right God, do the right thing like now you're now you're i'm on his side like what he said yeah and then there's like where that that girl you were dating's kind of in the middle where it's like complain but do nothing mm -hmm. 
I almost kind of feel like that's uh, like we we have to be able to ebb and flow from yeah. places on the spectrum. And I think it you also got to check yourself because as you get older, yeah, you lean more towards just kind of being like a if I'm inconvenienced everybody's wrong and they're all going to hear it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's a terrifying place to be. And I have to admit, I have st ventured into the, I've, 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 I've into the Larry David curb. <laughs> I've accidentally <laughs> kind of like, you know, what are you doing? You dip the chip. Oh dude. One time. Can I tell you the most, this is one of the most, the things I'm one of the, like the most, uh, embarrassed about. My wife and I moved to the suburbs and we had a house on a cul-de-sac next to this amazing family. Just such nice people. Uh -huh. They were two young, three young kids, three kids. Uh, parents like shaved their head for St. Baldrick's Day. Yeah. You know, uh, bake sales, like just good, wholesome kids. Yeah. Nicest neighbors you could ever ask for. And I got home from a show one night and... I was full of anxiety and I was drinking a little bit and whatever. And it was like two 30 in the morning in the summer and they're out in their pool and they are loud, screaming, yelling, having a great time. Yeah. Like a memorable summer evening. These yeah. kids, they have their friends over and dude, it hit like a certain point, maybe like two 40 in the morning or whatever. Yeah. This is a extremely quiet neighborhood. And I go out on the back deck and I go, Oh, and I yell and they all freeze and I go, shut the fuck up. And the minute the words left my mouth. Oh yeah. Charles, the minute the words left my mouth, I was like, I got to move. <laughs> I got to sell this house. This is, I, I, they're, they're going to be there when the sun comes yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they... And you could hear my words just echo into the silence of the darkness of the night shut the fuck up and they all just i i ended their beautiful summer evening the kids were like let's go back let's go in the house like yeah, yeah. i scared everyone yeah and i i i literally had to like crawl back into the the dark i'm saying it is making me feel like such a horrible piece of shit and i called my wife at work this is when she used to work overnight in the icu and I go, I did a bad thing. And she goes, what? And I'm like, I yelled at the neighbors. And she's like, what? And, and I'm like, I don't even know if we should be married anymore. Like, ah. I got so, like, I, I did a bad thing. And she's, I, I'm like, they were loud. And I, I yelled to shut up. And, and I'm like, it was bothering the dog. And she's like, it was bothering the dog. And I'm like, no, it wasn't bothering ah. the dog. I'm just embarrassed. <laughs> and I put my tail between my legs. And that morning, I went over to their house. Yeah. And I knocked on the door and I was like, listen, I'm a horrible piece of shit. I apologize. And I'm really sorry. And I shouldn't have yelled, but I'm like sick. I'm not feeling well. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just making excuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. I reacted and I'm very sorry. I bought them like hundreds of dollars in like movie gift cards and just it, dumb bullshit to try to make up for it. We sold the house. We moved. Oh, <laughs> we moved hilarious. out of the neighborhood. We literally so was it just the, the kids or was it the parents? Kids and the parents. Oh, kids and the parents. Uh yeah, I was that uh, there was there's no excuse for that type of behavior but at the moment I I I would give yourself grace in the sense that there is a um level of hey it's 2 in the morning and you guys are fucking you know whatever they were doing and being like have some but maybe the, the it was an impulse Shut the fuck Shut up. Shut the fuck up. That's comic. Dude, I was yeah, I was it, dealing with a heckler. That's what people don't like. Yeah. I was this is why comics need to stay in the city and not the suburbs. Because yeah. I'm bringing city energy, a city energy. to a cul-de-sac in I mean, Connecticut. There could have been a hey guys, it's two AM. Can you know try. maybe flick the light or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you you know, can we blah 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 or whatever? But yeah, yeah. I think there was a middle ground. I went full, full yeah, autistic yeah, yeah. anger on them. And here's my thing. Why did I have to why do I have it in me? They don't owe me anything, man. 
they don't oh they're not i wasn't a perfect neighbor we didn't sign something yeah saying like no fun after 2 a.m yeah yeah why did i let myself get to that level of like grump I'm the youngest person in the neighborhood. <laughs> Why am I yelling at children? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, this is, and I'll tell you, I spent thousands of dollars on therapy about that one moment. That one, oh yeah, that one moment. Because I'm like, I don't want that guy in me, that react and what, regret guy. What would have been your ideal reaction in that scenario or just let it, just let, let it go? Them just be kids and have fun. Yeah. And then tomorrow, and I've learned this now yeah. over time. This is a good part of old guy code. Yeah. Is don't react. Put an hour. Put a. They, they could have been like five more minutes in the pool and we're out. Yeah. Who knows? They could have spent all. The, who cares? Yeah. I was that kid. Yeah. Yeah. At my buddy's house, screaming and yelling until two in the morning. Right. Right. Why? Do, why am I ruining their amazing experience? So like, put time in between you and your reactions. But like. I wish I just kind of was like, oh, how nice kids having fun. <laughs> right. Why is that not my reaction? Why am I like this piece of shit cutting me off in like traffic? Like, why do I have to get like these kids were just having such a, a memorable time? What if one of those kids, what if, what if he was about to have his first kiss in that pool? What if? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the what ifs. Well, now we're living in the what ifs again. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you. But right, yeah, this yeah. is what I do to myself where yeah. it's like, did I literally just ruin that kid's first kiss? Did I ruin their fun? Did they, if you do this much, this well on your homework, you get to have like an all night pool party? Yeah. Regardless, why am I cramming my dickheadedness into their fun moment? I think, um, so, okay. So like, I've, well, it's, on my floor, it, uh, my apartment, is these neighbors that are like down the hall, right? Mm -hmm. And they got two kids, nice neighbors. So every time I see them, it's just like, hey, you know, sweetest people. But they let their kids rip and they let their kids essentially play in the hallway because their apartment is so small. Whatever, it's mm -hmm. just like just let them stretch. But now they're just in the hall ripping and running back and forth, screaming their heads off and doing God knows what. Yeah. And it's like, why do I have to suffer? Because you guys, you know, fine. It's the apartment's only such and such square footage. Why is that my it's not your problem. problem now? Right. That your kids is now screaming outside of my door. Mm -hmm. So but and so it's in me, in my initial instinct is to do that to the, is to open my door and go shut the fuck up like and to go to the parents and go you selfish prick why how is this okay how is this okay yes but having to take a beat and go all right that's what i want to do is that the best reaction in this scenario or is it to one go they're kids these are the kids living in new york growing up in the, i grew up in ohio with a giant backyard mm. and a castle compared to sure a, an apartment in new york city right and these parents even though not my fucking problem but these parents i mean god knows they're probably dealing with whatever these kids just they just want a moment of peace peace Go get go in the hall before, go in the I, hallway, before I throw you out the window. Blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Yeah. And is this truly, it's annoying, but how much further past annoying is it? Is it really keeping me from anything that's life altering? Or is this just like, oh, the fucking kids yelling outside. So I have to now in my 41 year old brain, put all that together and then come up with what is my next move as opposed to <laughs> react the and regret. <laughs> right. React yeah, and, and then regret. move. And then move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then move. <laughs> exactly. Swear and move. Yes. Yeah, swear and move. Wow. So you actually go through that process. On, yeah. You go, I grew up in a castle compared to these kids. I had a backyard. So you're going like you, you're empathizing with the kids and the parents. I'm trying to even you're my, a saint. my, my, my 
my gut, my emotion is your I un- hate your, these. Your uncle gut? My uncle gut, <laughs> yeah, is I hate these selfish pieces of shit parents and fuck these kids. That's my gut. But I'm, but in my rational human being, adult, 40-year-old brain, I'm just like, okay, what's what's beyond my emotion? And what 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 goes what's beyond, beyond my, my emotion? emotion? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, Charles. What's beyond <laughs> my emotion? Yeah. W B M E. That's like what would Jesus do? What's That's beyond the, yeah, my emotion? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. God damn, bro. It it keeps you from what's beyond my emotion. Oh my. Yeah, man. God damn it, dude. Yeah, man. Remember Cinnamon Toast Crunch? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Were we supposed to be nostalgic? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. Okay. If there was a TV character from back in the day when you were growing up that you could switch, that you used to wish you could switch places with, what TV character would that have been? Michael Seaver, Growing Pains. Oh, really? Dead on, dude. Yeah. yeah. Older brother. He had two cool friends, Boner and Eddie. Yeah. He lived above the garage for a while. Everybody loved him. His mom was kind of hot. Mom was hot. Yep. And he was, he dated all these great chicks. And also he stood up to the cocaine at the cocaine party in that very, very special, special episode of Growing Pains. You always had the very, very special episode. Those used to, those is the, the, I'm not going to lie. Maybe I'm a, a, I'm a complete cornball. I'm a square. I don't care. Those worked on me. Boner goes, Mikey, rich people go to the bathroom together. That <laughs> no, was what he know, thought yeah, doing coke know. was. So, yeah, uh, to have a friend like Boner that worked at the fish restaurant, yeah. Mike Seaver all the way, hands down. Uh, Mike Seaver was the, quint- back then, he was the quintessential cool Kid, he was Fonzie. He was he was our Fonzie. Eighties Fonzie. That's yes. so true. He was Floby Fonzie. Yeah, that's so true. And it was wild to think of how <laughs> he's not so he's Fonzie not anymore. Fonzie. How not Fonzie he was in real life. He's now Potsy. They, that's why they canceled the show. I think because because he would come on set and like start preaching and he's, he's doing and saying you're sinning and blah blah blah. And his sister. Candace, uh, Candace Bergen, Bergen, right? Candace Cameron. Candace Cameron. You're thinking of Murphy Brown. I think I'm thinking of Murphy. I'm making, I'm mashing two together. Yeah, they're both very. And I look, I grew up in religious. I'm a Christian, but they're very like fire brimstone. Yeah, not you know. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny that he was the he his quintessential his character was the cool kid, and Candace's character was the not so cool, kind of frumpy. Right. Like girl next door. Yeah. Who turned into a total smoke show, by She's the way. Smoke show and a half. Smoke show. What about you? Can I throw the yeah. question back? Um off the top of my head, and it seems like a such an easy pick, but Fresh Prince, Will Smith. Oh yeah? Yeah. Nice. I, every Monday I used to I used to dr- not that I was it's not that I used to dream that I was the Fresh Prince, but I used to wish that I was like his best friend. Like, like in certain sitcoms, I used to because I used to watch sitcoms growing up and wish that I was like on the show, but I never switched with the characters. I just wish I was a part of the group. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, what I, I mean? gotcha. Yeah, like so, like, but yeah, like, like I wish it was just, like Fresh. It was like Will Smith, Carlton, and then me. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> like I could like be in on like the. <laughs> But yeah, Fr- Fresh Prince would have been would have been my one. Or if I was like, uh, you know, if I could have been like the Jazzy Jeff character, I just want to be in that world somewhere. Ancillary, yeah, yeah. like yeah, you're in the back seat, in the back seat, just having fun with them. But Do you yeah. remember their handshake? Oh, of course. Oh, no. Shh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mike, Uncle Phil. Yeah. He was already rich. <laughs> I'm like, Vivian. That was <laughs> mine. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> um, that's cool. All right. This, ready? Yeah. Let me ask you one. Um, when you think of TV shows from when we were a kid, right? Yeah. What's the theme song that, if you had to pick one that kind of encapsulated the whole era, like what was your oh. favorite theme song from those days? <sighs> All right. See, now you're going to, I mean, I don't want to have to say the same thing again, but it's Fresh Prince is like, it's such a classic theme song that we still rap today yeah um i i would also i'm also throwing there so i don't say the same thing twice is like any of those tgif 
opening theme songs where it was just like, it was always the same guy with that same raspy voice. And it always opened, every show always opened with like a sweeping view of like whatever city that the show was based yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, if it yeah. was Full House, it was just like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Tony Dan like like Tony Dan's van but, yeah, driving yeah, yeah. Out, out of like <laughs> New York City into yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful fall <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> For, uh, family matters just like this beautiful view of chicago just like what is this? yeah 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 um but yeah any of those tgif shows uh you know all, all those kind of sound the same and it like puts me back into space but if i had to pick one probably fresh prince again yeah it's weird i would go with growing pains yeah, yeah. show me that smile again show me that smile you can't don't waste another Made it on you crying. That's Michael, the best. Uh, uh, Michael, Michael Siever was yeah. his father, right? Yeah. Uh, Alan Thick. Alan Thick wrote a bunch of those banging uh, song, uh, theme songs back in the day. And then his son, of course, Al yeah, yeah, probably yeah. stole all of them. All of them, yeah. 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 And, and just had hot chicks and Pharrell. He used to, his, um, uh, Alan Thick told a story one time about how, like, Cause his dad was so popping like forever mm. they used to um, and he used to i think host like the miss america pageants or whatever back yeah. in the day and he used to say like yeah i used to <laughs> like just come to the crib and it'd just be like a, a pageant a contestant just like coming out of the shower and just, like no just shit. Ready. I'm just like yo <laughs> he's um, like what's up son you want some chocolate milk here's miss idaho like, yeah. oh my god <laughs> wow oh, dude yeah R amazing r.i.p r.i.p um, what was pre-gaming like for you when you were like young and going out? I was such a square, like I was such a square that like pre-gaming for me, I was just happy to be going out that I didn't really have a pre-gaming. No kidding. No, I was just, I, I never, I was a square kid. I never really like the only thing that I cared about as a kid that as far as just like getting into some shit was girls. Like I just wanted like if I could like mm -hmm. see a boob, touch a boob, consensually of course. Uh, <laughs> gotta say that now or I'll yeah. wake up with a hashtag next to my name. <laughs> but like if I could like hook up with a chick or any uh, get anywhere close to hooking up with a chick, that's the only thing I cared about. But as far as just like I wasn't, I didn't really drink that much. Like I, I didn't really do a whole bunch of. A whole bunch of anything it was just like i was just like yo where are the girls like how right on some girls i was like one i was just one of those me and my friends back then it was just like a super bad it was just like just a couple dorks just trying to figure out <laughs> how to be a cool kid for once <laughs> and never really still like figuring Voltron, it out like three dorks yeah. becoming one cool three dorks trying to figure out how to touch a titty like, right on <laughs> i think that's a great log line for a show <laughs> three dorks right. figuring out how to touch a titty yeah let's yeah. sell that yeah oh, how did you pregame Oh, we would get fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, I drank a lot. So basically what we would do is drink as much as cheaply and as fast as we possibly could yeah. before going to the bar and spending all of our money. Now, did you have um, somebody buy your stuff for you or was this like... Oh, yeah. I mean, well, we had a we had a, 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 a liquor store. We call them package stores where I grew up. Yeah. And there were some that you just gave them like money and they chose what you drank because they knew we were underage. Ah. So there was like a whole backdoor thing where it was like you just handed them like collectedly crumbled up dollars yeah, and shit and then like you just went around the back and had like nine bottles of rumple mints for like four <laughs> dudes and now we're just all walking around like just pounding like yeah you know basically mouthwash yeah but yeah we drank as much as we could and that was pre-gaming so like we would get hammered before going to the bar at 44 pre-gaming yeah advil uh water a coffee maybe a nap i i would probably now buy food so when I got home, right, I would have like munchies to chew on instead yeah. of like coming home and making like bacon and mustard and peanut butter on bobbly. Me pre gaming today is be at forty one years old is me making sure that I have a proper meal early enough that I can <laughs> schedule yeah. in a nice poo, yep, and then <laughs> maybe get a nap in so that I can like at least go out. Yeah. somewhat somewhat fresh 
Bro, I go out so little now. Me pre-gaming is plugging in the heated blanket before I take a shower <laughs> to come take a nap. That's pre-gaming. Yeah, I have to know what um what the food situation is so I can decide if I can have a single beer or not. Because if I go food and beer, I'm done. I can't do it. Done. Yeah. Done. Too yeah. Full. I get too full on either of them. Yeah. So I either got to go beer, no beer. What's the food situation? Are we doing snacks? Are we doing appetizers? How long are we going to be eating? Yeah. <laughs> so I can plan the, the the drinking in between, up and down and around it. It's it's. But I'll do it though. I'm still getting messed up. Yeah, man. <laughs> How happy are you when a pa when a plan gets canceled last oh, minute? Oh <laughs> man, that's my surprise party now. Yeah. <laughs> when the party gets canceled oh my god that's it you get that text hey so sorry <sighs> even Can't... before the text when the phone buzzes and you're like oh my god maybe maybe maybe, maybe we're not going out oh throw my phone in excitement i'll be like hell yeah they're not doing anything tonight baby oh. <laughs> no, you're screaming and you're going oh no, no okay Damn. No. Oh. maybe some other yeah. time as you're texting them you're going i don't think i can make it tonight the text comes in hey i think i gotta cancel you're like this is the greatest night <laughs> of my life yeah which means I can cancel the next one. Yeah, exactly. The best. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that's old guy code. Yeah. Thank you so much, Charles, for hanging out, man. Tell everybody where they could find all things you. All things me, uh, anything Charles McBee on, on all the socials, TikTok, Instagram, uh, you know, Charles McBee, M-C-B-E-E. -E. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Sick. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Boom.